Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Your Right Heat, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, and I have the essence of rock and roll today. Rock the Foundation is our song from Outsider, and that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to rock that foundation. Let's take a listen to the song see what we're getting into. Here we go. I really dig this riff. And Mick and Dave are playing so tight together on their bass and guitar and Russell's keeping a really solid beat. This is a good start to a song. You know, it's, there's just, I don't know. There's some bands like, yeah, they play together. They sound good. But there's some bands that you just feel these guys have real unity. And when I listen to Heap, and it really goes back to the beginning of Uriah Heap, it, it just feels like there's such a camaraderie musically between these guys. And this this just tight playing is just an example of how comfortable they are with each other by this point. And again, this is Dave Rimmer's first album with the band. I don't know how long he had been working with them before they actually started recording the album, but I can tell you they are he is just as solid with with Mick and Russell as anyone has been in this band. I really like the vocal rhythm on this, especially that third line. Uh, very cool. But, you know, good inflections, as always. There's that bump on certain words where it needs to be for emphasis. Uh, you know, the thing about Bernie is that he really knows how to tell a story musically. And we talked about this when I interviewed him about, you know, how he's not the lyricist. He doesn't write lyrics. So all this is written by Phil or Mick. And uh, he comes in and he takes this story and he makes it sound like this is a real thing, like he's experienced it or he's relaying something to you. A very believable storyteller. And I find that fascinating, especially not being a lyricist, to be able to just take something and convey it in that way. I mean, it's it's a bit of a, being an actor, I think, as a singer as well. Oh man, so much to unpack. Uh, I, I, you know, if your podcast player is one that has one of those rewind 10 seconds or rewind 30 seconds and re-listen to that, uh, do that. Listen to this last section again. Pay attention to what Dave is playing on bass. There's some really good stuff in there. But then also go back and listen to just the layers of vocals. It's really spectacular. There's an there's another vocal that seems to stand out that's far in my right ear and it's it's you know one of the harmony vocals but that one really seems to stand out really like this the chorus you know it's it's kind of um it's a little bit flatter and it, it's a double chorus so that kind of um is a little bit of a turnoff to me but it's not a long one so that's okay i don't mind that but there's so much going on here that sounds good uh you know 
solid, solid playing. I really love the layer of the vocals. I love that powerful Hammond coming in, that oh-so-important Hammond that we've gotten used to. I'm really glad that that is a, a strong instrument that has become an, a part of their sound again, because for a while it was really gone. You know, I don't remember John Sloman playing much Hammond at all. I remember a lot of synthesizers. I don't really remember a lot of Hammond. Um, but yeah, it's, it's part of their signature, you know, so it's really nice to have that back and to have it in such a strong fashion. And, and, you know, Mick is just playing just rock solid in here, you know, and I, recently on my other show, uh, I did a, a, a dual interview with, uh, my friend John Matola from the deep purple podcast. And one of the things that I was talking about was that I hate, I think it was on that show. Maybe it was a different one. Um, but like, I hate songs that have like we're gonna rock and roll this or we're gonna you know uh, you, you know that kind of thing where it's like you're using it as a metaphor uh, i really hate that and this is not that though this is rock the foundation is not we're gonna rock and roll this it's we're going to you know we're gonna shake things up i like that and while shaking things up might be considered to be a bit rock and roll of an act and i could see the argument for that uh, it's not saying we're going to rock and roll the foundation. Like Shania Twain's We're Going to Rock This Country is really more about rocking the country with music. And that, I don't care for that kind of thing. But this is different. This is, like I said, just like we're going to cause some turmoil. We're going to shake things up. And, you know, much like we talked about in a previous song, sometimes you got to mess things up to make them better. And uh, it, it's it's an interesting concept. But in any case, yeah, this is a very powerful song. Uh, I love the blend of this. The instrumentation is fantastic. Another really good mix. Um, I like what I'm hearing. Yeah, I don't know if this snare drum is EQ'd a little bit differently on this song, or maybe it's just the the divide of the instruments that's making it come out a little bit more. But the snare seems to have a little bit more bottom end to it. It seems like it's a, a little bit heavier and thicker. I don't think he's playing it any differently. I think there's a slight difference in the sound, so maybe he's using a different snare, which is possible. Drummers will do that. Uh, they'll have maybe two or three different snares sometimes that they'll bring with them to the studio, and they'll record different songs on different ones so that they get, you know, some songs might need a heavier snare some songs might need a you know a, a, a poppier snare uh, sometimes they'll want a piccolo snare even if it's just for accents so they'll bring one of those uh, not uncommon at all so it may be a different snare but uh, in any case I do think it sounds a little bit different than what we've heard on this album so far There's just really some something great here in the layering of the vocals that we're hearing. Um, the, the blend that they put on this song is absolutely perfect. That additional voice that I'm hearing in my right ear, I think, is kind of the hook for me. It really just sells that even more. And uh, as we were about to transition into the next part, that was a great fill from Russell. Yeah, 
Yeah, I should have cut that off before the solo started, but um, that part prior to the solo was really cool where it slows down. I like the effect on the backing vocals when they're saying Celestina and kind of stretching that out a little bit. Really nice flange on that. I like that they only put it on the backing vocals and not the lead vocals. The backing vocals seem really huge, though, with that. Um, they, they seem like they're really wide in the audio spectrum, which is cool. You know, it fills out almost an ethereal kind of feel with that flange going to it. But I'm glad they didn't put it on Bernie because I think it was nice to have him stand out and, and not be part of that in that particular section. Uh, very cool, though. Uh, it was an unexpected uh, slowdown in the tempo. Uh, really dug that. I thought the playing was great through that as well. And then, of course, you know, Another stunning solo for Mick. I love what Davey was playing behind that. Um, you know, when Mick plays, his solos are just, they feel so fluid, you know? It doesn't really matter, again, how fast or slow he's playing. It's just like his fingers are always moving in a, in a very smooth motion. I don't feel there's any choppiness in there or anything. Just some great playing, as always, as we've come to expect from Mick over the last 20, 22 and a half seasons of this show now. Um, and, and more to come, for sure. Okay, this might sound weird. You might think I'm insane if you don't already. But for some reason, that last fill-in for Mick there on guitar, that last bit of soloing reminded me of the opening to High Priestess a little bit. Uh, You know, I'd have to analyze it with some kind of guitarist brain. But there was just something about that that seemed very familiar. It could just even be the sound, like the tone of his guitar was similar to that. And that's, uh, you know, subconscious throwback for me. But yeah, very cool. Uh, And I love that opening, by the way. So that's great. Um, yeah, good ending. I like that they dropped the vocals back right when the guitar soloing started up again during the chorus. Uh, that was pretty cool. And then having it come in just, you know, over the music starting to die off was, was really nice too. A very nice touch, great ending. I could definitely see this having some commercial radio playability. Um, it's got such a great sound to it though. I, I could see it. It's a little long probably for the radio at about four minutes, but, um, yeah, good song, good song. Good song. Good song to end our week on, I would say. We are going to rock this weekend. I hope you guys are going to do something fun. Um, I'm sure I'll be working on something. (laughs) I don't know what it'll be yet, but I'll be working on something. Uh, Have a great weekend, guys. Take some time to do something for yourself. Take a minute to do something for somebody else. Just reach out to somebody and go, hey, I was thinking about you. I hope you're doing great. You can change somebody's life very easily by doing that. And hope you guys have a great weekend of listening to some really good music. Maybe you're going to watch a live video or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, enjoy it. It's time for you guys to have time for yourselves. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.